You are listening to Packers Talk Radio Network. Packers Talk. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice. Hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signing. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. Alert, alert, clear all channels. Fresh from America's dairy land, ladies and gentlemen. From the Benches Podcast. From the benches with Ross Uglum and Ryan Hillsler. That's awesome, man. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of From the Benches. This is the 2016 NFL Draft first round reaction edition, and I am here live with my co host, Ryan Hillsler. Ryan, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, by live, you clearly mean pre-recorded, but we're sitting next to each other in the same room. You are in my living room here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are uh, reacting to the first round of the NFL draft. Uh, it is currently 1.15 a.m. Lambo time, Friday morning, uh, giving you a giving you an early morning, late night reaction to the first round. What do we what do we got? Well, you and I got stuck in and by the way, this is Ross Uglum and I am a writer at cheeseheadtv.com and I forgot to mention that, but I'm sure by this point you guys all recognize my voice. Ryan and I got stuck uh watching some Kenny Clark cut-ups on on YouTube. And of course, we will uh get to Kenny Clark as the the show kind of progresses here. We're not going to keep you guys for too long as we only have really one Packers uh related bit of news to get to. But uh, Ryan, you were you were at work for the NFL draft. I was watching the whole thing on uh, on TV, so we maybe had a little bit of a different perspective. Let's let's start off from Jump Street. Any surprise for you with the order of the two quarterbacks taken? Uh, one, two there. No, it seemed like that was the consensus right out of the gate. Um, the 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 teams kind of played it up like, you know, the Rams, oh, we're not sure who we're going to take. We traded up to number one to, to, you know, to be indecisive. It was, they were basically taking Goff from the get-go. I don't think there was a lot of drama there. Um, and then when you when you saw the Eagles trade up to number two, that kind of cemented it. Everybody knew at that point. The Rams knew who they were taking. The Eagles knew who the Rams were taking. So the Ram, or so the Eagles knew who they would be able to get at number two. There wasn't any drama. I think they were they were playing it up uh, because the NFL wanted them to get some get a little bit of drama in those first couple picks. But everybody knew when those two trades were made, who was going one and two. It was Goff one. It was Wentz two. Basically, as soon as those trades were made, that was that's what was going to happen. I disagree with you a little bit just because the the LA reaction to the initial trade, like before the Eagles had moved up. You saw Bill Simmons, who's now out there doing the ringer stuff and and whatever, and and like all of his crew and a lot of other NFL experts talking about, like not maybe later on in this process, but right away when the trade got made, it was hey the Rams just moved up for Carson Wentz, and then a week later it was like no they moved up for Jared Goff, and that's where it stuck. And then when you saw the Eagles move up, and it was funny, you know, you hear their general manager go, we know exactly who we're getting. So they, right. I mean, they knew. Yeah, they knew what was up. They made a phone call. The Rams knew. 
They knew who the Rams were taking. Yeah. You don't make that trade if you don't know exactly who's going to be there at number two. Right. And, and so part of me, just because of all the battles that we, uh, you know, as the Packers have had over the years with the Eagles, like it's going to be hard uh, for me to cheer for the Eagles. But at the same time, I'm very excited that, that Carson Wentz was able to avoid Jeff Fisher because I just can't handle the uh, the oscillation between 7 and 9, 8 and 8 and 9 and 7. The, 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 yeah. Just the... The rampant mediocrity is is not something that that I can deal with. And then Joey Bosa goes third to the Chargers. Any thoughts on that? I mean, they, I feel like that's kind of a weird fit. Yeah, that was not that was a surprise right out of the gate. Um, you know, we said the first two picks were pretty much known, uh, but there were people saying that it was people assumed it was going to be uh, assumed it was going to be Tunsley. There was some rumors that it would be. Ronnie Stanley from Notre Dame that it was basically going to be a wild card at number three. Nobody really knew what it was going to be, but for it to be, uh, uh, for it to be Bosa, it does seem like a weird fit. Nobody really had that as the pick. It, it basically threw the first round into a tizzy right out of the gate. Um, and several things contributed to that, but yeah, the, the chargers making that pick at number three was, Definitely contributed to a to an unpredictable first round. My guy there for sure for uh, San Diego was DeForest Buckner. I just the yeah the defense that they run to get a six foot seven guy like that that makes plays and just stick him in there at five tech and then you know again it, it, in their two man fronts when they run nickel. I I just thought that that was pretty easy and to take a four three defensive end from college and try and throw him in there when you've already got you know. Um, Melvin Ingram and and um, who's the who's the guy that starts across from him? I got nothing. I don't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not up on the Chargers depth chart. Okay, well, it's it's Melvin Ingram and another highly drafted defensive end, and then the second team is Kyle Emanuel, who they took in the fifth round last yep. year, and his counterpart. But just to, for them to take another edge defender, I thought was interesting with with needs that they had on the offensive line. Could have taken Tunsil. Could have taken Conklin. Could have taken Ronnie Stanley, or could have taken DeForest Buckner. I thought that was that. I thought that that was the pick. It just ended up not being. They went with Bosa. I thought that was a little bit interesting. And then came the pick of the draft. And uh, first of all, I just want to ask you, what did you think of Ezekiel Elliott's crop top? I mean, did you, did you enjoy that as much as I did? I didn't enjoy it at all. That was ridiculous. Uh... I get it. That's his thing, and you, you you go into the draft wearing a a, a tailor made crop top button up shirt. I first time I've ever seen one of those. I didn't particularly enjoy it, but I get it. I guess I appreciate the fact that he kept everything buttoned. In, like after you know the red yeah. carpet, he kept it himself together. Um, right, because you button up the suit jacket, you don't really see the crop top. And, no, I could yeah. wear a crop top every day of my life if I just kept the jacket. Button. Right, nobody would know. You just know you got it going on under there, and so it is. It is interesting, I guess. But uh, that was such a classic Jerry Jones pick. I mean, I think yeah. uh, you're more of the run the football school than I am, maybe. But my philosophy is pretty firm, and that I'm just not taking a running back in the top twenty. I am sure as hell. Not taking a running back in the top four. When it, I mean, when is Dallas going to pick in the top five again? When Romo retires, like that has to be. They, you got to get something more long term, right? If you're going to get it, if if you have a chance to pick in the top four, you can't take a running back. What if what if he what if he's not good? What if he is good and he lasts for seven years? I mean, that's just. Uh, I would have rather seen Ramsey. I mean, there's a lot of guys. Uh, that I guess I would have rather seen. Uh, I want to talk two things. I guess, uh, Go going ahead. back to that, I guess I can kind of see maybe they think they have a closing window with Tony Romo. They've got this good offensive line. They really do. They don't want to They don't want to roll out another running back by committee. They don't want to have washed up Darren McFadden being their running back. They want to get a guy behind that line and with Tony Romo, Romo at quarterback and Des Bryant at receiver. Okay, but washed up. Get somebody up. talent. I, I don't know. 
Darren Washed Mc- up Terry McFadden yeah, is fine. I Terry McFadden's corpse ran for 1,100 yards last year. What's you your, don't need to spend the fourth what's overall your, pick. What's your upside for Zeke Elliott? 1,500? I mean, like, if it goes nuts. Because doesn't 1,500 win the rushing title? Yeah. Like, what was Peterson this year? 14? But if 20? you've got a healthy Tony Romo, you don't want to be getting 1,600 yards out of his You don't want to be winning the running rushing title. It's the... Uh, yeah, anyway. It's a lot. For, All right. Yeah. So what we're going to do from here is, I, Ryan, I want to ask you two questions, and then we're going to do a, a very brief dive into the NFC North picks, and then we'll talk some Kenny Clark, because you and I just got sucked into like way more Kenny Clark film than needed to happen. We watched a lot of Kenny Clark after uh, after midnight. Right, right, right. Well, okay, actually, we're going to talk about three things, because we have to talk about the uh, Miles Jack experience and where yeah. we were emotionally. Uh, and, and, and then where we ended up. So first of all, uh, let me ask you, we've already gone through the top four. Let's let's throw that out. So yep. we're talking picks four to 31. What was your favorite pick in the draft? Do, 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 do. You know what? I'm going to let Ryan think for a little bit. Go ahead. It's actually... I don't have a list in front of me, and I was at work while this was going on. <laughs> Mine actually is number five. I think the best fit in the draft, because of Dante Fowler last year, I think that the Jags already have their number one pass rusher coming back for Coach Gus Bradley, and bang, they got the best player in the draft. I am in love with Jalen Ramsey, and I think to get him at five, you play him at corner. I don't even think you need to play him at outside corner. Maybe if you play him at outside corner in you the base. You can play him all over the place. But you could play him at slot. You could play him at free safety. You could do all sorts of stuff. I think week one against the Packers, he's going to be lining up over Randall Cobb. He's going to be blitzing. He's going to be feigning blitz. He's going to be dropping back into zone. He's going to be shucking Randall Cobb at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be causing all sorts of problems. But he's going to continue to cause those problems for teams up and down the AFC. And I, I just think to get a player like that, uh, at, at five was tremendous because I honestly think if you asked Jalen Ramsey to just be a number one corner, he could absolutely pull it off. But yeah. you, that would be a ridiculous use of him. I think you can use Jalen Ramsey in the way that the Packers used Charles Woodson in his prime, his first year in the league. I, I, I think that much of yeah. Jalen Ramsey. So who who is your, uh, now that you've had a chance to maybe take a quick look at everything, who is your top pick, uh, just excluding the top four, because we've kind of already hashed that out. I do like Ramsey because I think he was... But don't be that guy. I'm not. I've got, I've got more. Okay. I've got more than that. I do like Ramsey because I think he was one of the one of the two or three best players in the league, and to, or in the draft, and to get him at five is a good value. But I I really like the uh, the Dolphins getting the the drama queen of the evening, Learn me tons of that's another ha- that's another whole thing that we have to get into. So oh, it's oh, gonna be man. another topic. But go ahead. Oh, go ahead. To to get him at thirteen when ten minutes before draft coverage starts, you think he's gonna be a top five pick. He's the best tackle uh in the draft. And uh and then some stuff comes out and all of a sudden he drops all the way down to thirteen and the Dolphins get him there. I like that a lot. Unless he just blows up emotionally and never sees the field. Who knows what happens because he threw his head, co- he threw his college head coach under the bus a little bit, or he got hacked and someone else threw his college head coach under the bus. Someone threw him under the bus. People got in the way of some buses with Laramie Tunsil tonight. But if he is, if that's all smoke, if that's all draft night drama, that's a gr- incredible value at thirteen for the Dolphins. Uh, they're, that's a great pick to get a 13. He was a guy who was going to be a hands-down top five pick, like I said, 10 minutes before draft coverage starts, and then you get him at 13. That threw a wrench in everybody's draft plans, everybody's tre- checking Twitter, going over their, their reports, their interviews, calling scouts. Uh, his agent was making calls. That threw the first, that threw the first round through a big loop. Uh on top of the the Joey Bosa getting picked at third, the first round was all over the place. Be, I mean, in large part because of uh, Laramie Laramie Tunsil taking a hit out of a, a of a of a gas mask. Yeah, let's talk about that just for a minute before we get to worst picks of the first round. 
I, I've never really seen any shit like this like since I've been covering the draft. I don't know if someone was super mad at him. I know there's some stuff with his stepfather and like his stepfather is swearing that he didn't have anything to do with it. But somebody got it, number one on his Twitter and number two, I don't know if you saw this just because of how late you were coming in, got on his Instagram too yeah. and looked at his DMs and it was stuff like basically accusing Hugh Freeze or someone. Asking his coach for rent money. Right, for like getting paid. Which, uh, you know, wherever, whatever side you stand on the... Doesn't affect Larry Tunsil at that point. <laughs> yeah. Should, you freeze is like, uh, right. what are you doing, man? Bro, bro. And, and uh, you know, it's funny because, like, when Kim DJ got in trouble, he completely threw Tunsil under the bus. And people got, basically got at Kim DJ for throwing Tunsil under the bus, where Tunsil, like, very clearly has his own problems. Uh Pictures or, I guess, a video surfaced of Tunsil right before the draft uh, smoking weed out of a gas mask, like a hazmat gas mask. Connected to a bong. To Connected to a giant bong. And then, Pretty impressive setup, it, I've got to say. It but. was, it was. So Tunsil's agent came out with like this just ridiculous statement. And then uh, Tunsil himself said that the... Which I don't believe for a minute. The, the agent statement was fake. That was... Pretty brilliant writing, not a real statement from his agent. That I'm just talking fake. about the fact that Tunsil basically said, and his whole team said, not fake, that it was five years old. He was claiming... Oh, the video, yeah. That the, that was, a, as a high school senior, I don't think I believe that. I don't even remember camera phones in 2011, but I don't think they looked like that. Like I, Also, he's a full-grown man wearing... Pretty much the same earrings in the video as he was on draft night. Yeah, then when the goal I don't changed, think that was. I don't think that was. I really four enjoyed Dayton Jones saying how much uh, Larry Tunsil looked like Suge Knight. I, I really appreciated <laughs> that. But yeah, that was a, uh, and it wasn't a meteoric drop though because the what was it pick thirteen or pick fifteen? Yeah, Miami got him at thirteen. Okay, well the the Dolphins rescued Tunsil uh, early enough. gave gave Ryan Tannehill. Uh, a break on that offensive line. That's a good offensive line, though. I mean, at this point, because you still got Juwan James. you still got Billy Turner. you still got Brandon Albert. You can add Laramie Tunsil to that group. Yeah. You've got some very versatile pieces that can line up all over that offensive line and really give Tunsil some protection. So I think you have... They lose Lamar Miller in the offense overall, though. Right. right. I mean, you lose Lamar Miller, but if, if you prescribe to the you can find a running back damn near anywhere theory right you know you're, you're gonna be fine i would always improve the offensive line before i would improve yeah. uh the the running backs which from dallas's standpoint we're talking about is you can't mm-hmm. really improve that that offensive line the uh martin frederick collins free tyron smith crew is pretty impeccable yeah but you know when you're talking about the dolphins you're not really in that it's, an up, it's a big it's, upgrade. It's, you're not in that stratosphere. Yeah. So now that we've sort of discussed the Tunsil uh, end of things, Ryan, what was your least favorite pick of the first round? Uh, well, as much as I like the guy going in, I think it was Tennessee trading up to get Jack Conklin at eight. Okay. So they, they trade out of one. Right. Everyone, assume, everyone assumes going in, oh, they just take they just take Laramie Tunsil at one. Uh and they move on. They've got. They took Mariota last year. They'll just trade it for Demarco Murray. This is what they're going to do. So they trade out uh, to fifteen, I believe. Yeah, trade out to fifteen. Yep. Uh, and then at eight, you get you. You trade up to eight to get Jack Conklin, who I think you maybe get at fifteen anyway. And even if you don't, you take. Taylor Decker. Yeah. Or, Maybe yeah. Jack Conklin yeah. goes ahead of 15, but you take Taylor Decker and it's fine, but you give up assets to go up and get Jack Conklin at eight. I think that's not a very good value, especially after you make it what look like a smart move, trading out of the top spot. You still maybe get, you almost get Laramie Tunsil at, at 15, sitting where you're at, but you definitely get Taylor Decker. You get a tackle at 15 after you trade it out of the number one overall spot. You improve your standing. You got some draft picks to to improve your roster with, but then you trade back up to get Jack Conklin. I don't think it's a very good value. Plus, you gave up picks to get up and get uh, to get him at pick number eight. I don't. 
I don't really like anything that went on with that uh, with that pick there. My big problem is that secondary run uh, on receivers. I, I have no problem with Corey. In fact, I was actually very pleased just for like a uh, completely selfish reason because I personally myself had um, – had Corey Coleman as the top receiver in this class. And he goes first. He went first for receivers, but for the Texans to take Will Fuller uh, second, uh, yeah, gee, that was something else. I mean, you talk about a limited route tree and a guy who maybe doesn't have the uh, the best hands in the world. He can run the nine though. Uh, yeah, he can run the nine, but so can Jeff Janis, and 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 he got. Jeff Janis in the seventh <laughs> round. And I'm not saying that Will Fuller's like a, you know a, a worse project than 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 Jeff Janis because we we've, we've been through year one and two of Jeff Janis and and like 88 percent of Jeff Janis's production came in the fourth quarter of the Arizona game. Yeah. So I mean I understand that, but at the same time, I would never take Will Fuller at 21 overall. I certainly wouldn't take Will Fuller with uh, you know Sterling Shepard or Josh Doxson. Uh, on on the clock, I don't like Laquan Treadwell, and it's funny because I'm going to get so much shit for that. <laughs> yeah, you are. It's like buddies of mine that you know. When I I even went to to Twitter and was like, "Hey, cool, that's two years in a row the Vikings yeah. take a guy that I thought sucked," and I I got Vikings fans immediately immediately, right immediately right down my throat. It's like no, I actually did think Trey Wayne's was grabby and was not going to be a good player, and I w- was borderline going to kill somebody. When I saw Laquan Treadwell mocked to the Packers, yeah, I I don't think he's a good player. Go look, go listen to our offensive offensive preview. Yeah, Ross throws Laquan Treadwell <laughs> under the bus, under a really big bus. Yeah. So, but at the same time, like as little as I think of Laquan Treadwell, Will Fuller two picks before that is is a really serious it's not great. problem. But let, so let's talk before we break into the the Kenny Clark. Uh, which, of course, as upstanding Packers fans, we have just absolutely completely talked us in, ourselves into in the last 45 minutes. Although, yeah. i got to tell you, that was going to happen with any <laughs> defensive lineman prospect because this That's class true. is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. I think we were pretty devastated that the Denver trade down happened, the pick in front of Green Bay. Because yeah. I'm not convinced that Kenny Clark's not there at 31, and I'm not convinced that if that happens, you don't have... Denver's end of the third round pick as gravy as as yeah. absolute Jalen Smith gravy, but yep. I just it was fine. It, it was fine. The, the bottom line is uh, the guy that we were talking about all night was of course Miles Jack because yep. the Packers have needed forever and ever uh, an off the ball linebacker. It's very similar to the uh, need at safety that they had for a number of off seasons. Didn't really get it addressed. <laughs> Tried to half-ass address it with uh, John McMillan in, like, the fourth round. Not a good pick. You love that pick. I did. Well, I loved the reasoning behind the pick, which was that he had unbelievable measurables. Is a mid-round pick. Came from a small school. The dude reeked of Nick Collins. When you just looked at, like, and I have blind faith in Ted Thompson. I'm not going right. to, you know. Who am I? Disagree with that. Right. But. You just when you looked at Jerome McMillan's stuff and you looked at Nick Collins' stuff, they had a lot of the same stuff. It just yeah didn't didn't work out. Didn't go that way. So what ended up happening was Ted Thompson just went ahead and took the best free safety in the draft at pick twenty one, and they were done. That's it. All of a sudden, they have safety figured out, and we were hoping that he was going to and pick Miles Jack. Yeah. The issue, obviously, with Miles Jack, that's a player that we feel like was probably a top eight talent, top six talent in this draft class, is a degenerative knee situation. Uh, cartilage possibly coming away from the bone. That's what Mike Mayock is saying. Uh, what, what we, uh, as as very amateur medical guys, are, are considering to be less of a problem than what Jalen Smith has got going on. But obviously, it's a very serious problem because uh, we're done with with round one. It's over. And he's not on an NFL football team yet. Yep. And, and Green Bay, who had a tremendous need at off the ball linebacker, didn't take him. They didn't take Reggie Raglan either. They didn't no. take Reggie Raglan. They didn't take Sean Robinson. They didn't take Jerron Reed. They didn't take Nunya from from Alabama. Nunya. No. But they did take um, Kenny Clark. Before we get into Kenny Clark, your thoughts on the Miles Jack situation? 
How jacked were you? I I was pretty jacked. Uh, so, and, and if you listen to the defensive preview, I, I believe I mentioned that Miles Jack was the kind of guy that would be happy if Ted Thompson Thompson traded up to get in the beginning in the in the early parts of the first round. I, I think without the injury concern, he is that kind of a player. I would love to see a healthy Miles Jack in a Dom Capers defense, playing off the ball linebacker, playing dime safety hybrid awesome stuff he can do so much would just solve all the inside linebacker problems so you you see him or you hear these injury rumblings oh maybe he falls to the falls to the 15 maybe he maybe falls out of the out of the top 15 well he's never to make it to 27 then you start you start getting to the falcons pass on him the raiders pass on him these teams start to pass on him and you start getting a little psyched. What if, what if he's there at twenty-seven? What if we don't? We don't what if we don't have to trade up to get Miles Jack? What if we just get Miles Jack? And uh, then you see the the uh, the Broncos trade up. You think he's? They're not trading up to get ahead of us to get Miles Jack. They're gonna. They're trading up to get a quarterback. Miles Jack's gonna be on the board. And then you see Ted Thompson pass on him on such a perfect fit uh, for the team, for the defense, for 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 the for the roster. You got to think that that injury problem is a big deal that the that the Packers weren't considering at all in the first round. Maybe off the board completely. Maybe maybe heaven forbid he falls to fifty seven. We'll see what happens then. But you just have to think that that injury is the injury issues are much as or. Enough of a problem that he just wasn't even an option uh, at 27. That's how I'm talking myself into it. I hope it wasn't a coin flip between Miles Jack and uh, and Kenny Clark. Although we did talk ourselves into the Kenny Clark, I, I hope that wasn't the situation. I hope it was that uh, that Miles Jack just wasn't going to be an option in round one, and they went to their they went to their big board uh, and picked the picked the best player that thought was available. But I was psyched. I was. I was getting really into the possibility of having Miles Jack as the uh, linebacker on the Packers. Yeah, Lord knows if he's even like on their board. I mean, they yeah. might have. It's, a, it's it might just be crossed off. They yeah. are a notoriously conservative team. I completely understand that after everything that happened with Justin Harrell, like that is yeah. not surprising at all to me. So, who knows if Jack is like really even an option for them? Yeah. The nice thing is, is you still got. Kamali Correa, you've still got Noah Spence, you've still got DJ Goodson, you've still got Deion Jones, you've still got Miles Jack, you've still got Reggie Ragland. There are you've still got Suha Cravens. You still got Suha Cravens. You've still got who's that other kid? A lot of players. The cash, Jeremy Cash. Yeah. yeah. The second, I mean, that first round went so well for Green Bay. We wanted them to trade down. It's still only twenty five times till they pick again. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and a good eight nine players, I'd be. Com- that right. I would have been over Hunter Henry's K okay with in the first round. Hunter Henry's still on the board. Yeah. Um Sterling Shepard, my guy, is still on the board. There are still players on the board that would absolutely make an impact on this yeah. team. So I think it's it's too uh early to get bent out of shape, but Kenny Clark was the pick, and it was a super Ted Thompson pick, just in the sense that it was just like boring as shit. Yep. I mean so boring. Um, Although a little out of Ted Thompson's uh, wheelhouse. I saw like three or four people predict it on Twitter, which is not a Ted Thompson thing. Ted Thompson makes the picks that nobody sees coming, that uh, that that nobody mocks to the Packers. But I saw, I saw a handful of people uh, say Kenny Clark was going to be the pick. He came in for a came in for a a, a, a pre draft meeting with the Packers. So uh, not a total shock, but with the number of guys on the board. Um. Yeah, like you said, boring. It, it 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 wasn't a splash. But how do you make a splash with seven guys on the board that the fan base is going to be happy with? There's right. nobody to there's nobody to splash with. Exactly. That's why you you don't know, hope. The idea was to move down four spots. Right. Take the guy you want to take. Get yeah. Get pick. another top hundred pick. But it happened. The pick in front of him. That's fine. Uh, even it was funny. I was looking on NFL.com trying to find um, some Kenny Clark measurables. Maybe a little bit of a 
a scouting report beyond just what I had written for Cheesehead TV because I got to tell you, I had Kenny Kirk 11th in my interior defensive Ryan rankings. Um, first of all, that's fine because I basically was okay with 14 of them. I mentioned that last night yeah. on the War Room podcast. I didn't care. They After the top, well, one basically, like after Buckner, well, maybe after Buckner and Rankins, but after Buckner and Rankins, I just didn't care. I mean, truly. But what I what I missed about Kenny Clark's first of all, I didn't realize he was twenty. I, I didn't know that. Um, I I should have probably known True that. True junior, but I, I did not that. realize that he was that young, going to turn twenty one, like in the middle of this football season. Uh, but the, the one thing that I did make note of was his production. It's unreal. Seventy six tackles. Uh, I think UCLA credits him with six sacks. Pro Football Focus or more College Football Focus uh, credit him with seven sacks. Uh, you, Unbelievable production for a twenty-year-old kid in a three-four yeah. defense. We watched a lot of three of, full games of snaps of, of cutups after with, midnight. Yep, yeah, after midnight after the cutup. And the the three things I got to say is this: first of all, his push is is tremendous. It's absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Second of all, it's brilliant. I couldn't believe his ability to diagnose plays. I think when his technique catches up to his physical ability and his smarts, he's really, really going to be a special player. And the third thing is his just overall play strength is, is really way more impressive than my first run through his film. I think that for a kid that's 6'3", 314, that's a guy who can play all along the line. has got that versatility that Capers needs, that versatility that Thompson loves. But at the same time, if he adds 13 pounds of muscle, I mean, he's going to be an absolute freak show and he's a 20 year old kid so as you and i have uh, personally found out you can gain a lot of weight from your early 20s to your to your late 20s oh it's, yeah no it's, problem it's a, it's not an issue so i i think that kenny clark might be able to contribute to the 2016 packers but he might kill people on the 2018 packers I, and yeah. i mean that very seriously i think that kenny clark is a is a top-notch talent, I and I maybe didn't – he was one of my guys, but I maybe didn't realize just how high I should rank him because of that upside and the production. And when you cross production on that level with youth of that level, and then you add into the fact that he's playing in probably the second or third best conference in the country, I, I think that that's really impressive. And a lot of the reason I think that – that uh, Anthony Barr, Eric Kendrickson, Miles Jack were able to make so many plays is because for the last three years, Kenny Clark has been occupying some double teams, man. Yeah, we saw him playing a l- against a lot of double teams and holding his own against a lot of double teams, sh- staying on the line of scrimmage against double teams. Uh, and when when he did, when he was able to take on guys one on one, did a lot of that guard destroying that we love watching Mike Mikey Daniels do. And uh I, I see a lot of I see a lot of that. And I, I feel like there are two guys when we line up in that nickel when there's two defensive linemen, when you're not playing a nose tackle in that 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 the three four nickel. Watching Kenny Clark uh Kenny Clark after dark tonight, it was uh I like that. I right? yeah, I, I, got it. I, I got had it. to slip it in. Um uh, so it made me think that that having those two as a combination, Mike Daniels on one side, Kenny Clark on the other side, in that nickel, that that's I, I really like that combination. I see a lot of the I see a lot of similarities in their game. Uh, Kenny Clark is a a very good bull rusher. He's shoving guys back. He's he's able to get that initial punch, knock guys back off the line, and then disengage and make a play. Uh, whether it be on the ball carrier, the quarterback, whatever it might be, very strong at the line of scrimmage. I think he shows a lot of the same things that Mike Daniels um, is so good at in the NFL. Ross, like you said, maybe that's in 2018. Uh, he's definitely in the defensive line rotation in 2016, but I think he's a guy who can um, who can develop, put on some weight, and really be a force uh a year or two down the road. But as a guy who fills in in the rotation now, I think he's going to be serviceable. You see def- defensive linemen take a little while to get used to the NFL, um, and I think he can just slip into the rotation uh, for this year's Packers. I think 
The defensive line isn't such a major hole when you get Mike Pennell back. Um, I think the defensive line would be okay, and I think he's a really nice addition to the 2016 Packers, and I like his potential down the road. I see a lot of things I like with Kenny Clark. Yeah, and I, you know, I've already gotten into an argument with another guy from, uh, honestly, from even our network about this whole thing. And you're right, I'm just not that worried about defensive line. I mean, you got Mike Daniels. Um, that's a, a 55 to 60 snap. Yeah, game player. he's a three down. He, he's an every snap defensive lineman. And maybe when you, you want don't... to crank him down to fifty, but that's fine because Dayton, Dayton Jones is getting fifteen snaps. Yep. Julius Peppers is getting twelve snaps. You can play Josh Boyd thirty snaps. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Christian Ringo is probably going to get twenty snaps. And Troy Guyon's fine still. The Troy Guyon's getting forty five snaps. Yeah. Mike Pennell comes back from a back, suspension. Mike Pennell's getting thirty five snaps. You can sort of redshirt a a, a guy like Clark. But if he's ready, cool. Let him uh, go. Yeah. Right. But the, the argument I got into was, oh, let's, you know, this is such a deep defensive line class. Look at all these guys. Let's take another one around two. I'll kill somebody. No, you can't go one I have two. no time for that. Take another guy with a compensatory play, pick, fine. A, when you play a 20 front, I, I just, I can't do it. Yeah. Give me Bronson, Kafuso, whatever, from BYU in round three. Give me DJ Reader in round five. Give me a playmaker. I need somebody who makes plays in round two. Yeah. I don't care if it's Hunter Henry, he makes plays. I don't care if it's Sua Cravens, he makes plays. I don't care if it's Noah Spence, he makes plays. Shit, if Reggie Raglan drops to 57, there's going to be a Reggie Raglan party right in the <laughs> middle of God and everything at Miller Park. I will come down and find you. I just can't have another trenches guy yeah. when they're playing 20 front and your best defensive player is Mike Dennis. All due respect to Clay Matthews. Whom I love. Mike but Daniels is a better defensive Mike player. Daniels is a better defensive player. He's half of your defensive line. You cannot spend both of your top 57 picks. On the other half of your defensive line. On the other line. half of your defensive line. It's yeah. absolutely out of hand. So you're, you're, you're either wasting snaps or you think you're going to take snaps away from Mike Daniels, which just isn't really going to happen at this point. All right. So to wrap this baby up at damn near 2 o'clock in the morning. 1.51 a.m. First of all, I'll go with three things. Number one, in a, in a range from 2014 to 2015, 2014 was Ha Clinton Dix, which was woohoo. 2015 was Demarius Randall, which was ha. Huh? Where's this pick? Second thing is, what's your grade for this pick? And the final thing, and we were damn good at this one time last year, was <laughs> with the 57th overall pick, and the 88th overall pick, who do the Green Bay Packers select in the morning? Uh, well, in the evening. This will come out in the morning. Uh, well, as far as where it fits with, with HaHa Clinton Dixon, Demarius Randall, uh, in terms of reaction, obviously Demarius Randall exceeded all of our expectations uh, yeah, in his done. rookie season. Yeah, We were at that bar and we were confused. Yep. So uh, I, I would say it's in the middle. I'm, I'm more excited about the, the Kenny Clark pick than I was the Demarius Randall pick. But I was all in on the on the Ha Ha Clinton Dix when that was when that was the pick. That was that's who I wanted them to pick. It's who I expected them to pick. He was on the board. They took him. It was perfect. That 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 whole year went exactly as I as I expected it to. The Demarius Randall was more of a surprise. Um, you saw safety next to his name, and you 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 wondered why they took a safety two years in a row. This is this is right in the middle. This fits a need. It's a guy who. Who has some talent? He's a young guy. He's gonna he's gonna develop. He doesn't need to be a difference maker right now, like Haha Clinton Dix did when he when he came in to fill a huge safety gap. The, I like the pick. He's a talented guy. He's gonna fill a need. Maybe now, but definitely down the road. I like it, and uh, I definitely am more excited about the pick right now than I was uh, the Demarius Randall pick net last year. That took. That took some talking into, and it took some uh, some proving wrong from from Mr. Randall himself. So grade me out. I'd give it a I'd give it a B. Okay. I I definitely like it, but I definitely I also want to see the I want to see the big picture. I want to know what else they get. I want to see them get uh, either um, either an edge defender, somebody who can rush the passer, somebody who can take the torch from from a Julius Peppers uh, when he's no longer around, from a Nick Perry when he eventually maybe is gone. 
uh, I want to see somebody who can play on the edge, or I want to see an off the ball linebacker to finally, finally fill that hole um, that's been glaring at us for a couple of years. I want to see the big picture. If we, if, if like you said, if we do take another defensive lineman, and then we take a wide receiver in the third, whatever happens, I want to see the big picture before I give this a final grade. But I, I give it a B for now. Um, I like the pick. I like the potential. And I like that there's still some guys on the board that can that can fill some needs. All right, so we're not we're not messing around with trades. Uh, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. We really thought that that first trade was going to come in tonight, and it didn't. We missed it by one. It's unfortunate, but it happened. So with the 57th overall pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Packers take. Oh, there are a lot of guys on the board here. Uh, I'm gonna say. Suwa Cravens with 57. I think there are a lot of guys on the board I would like uh, ahead of Suwa, but I think by the time 57 rolls around, I think he's going to be a guy who's still going to be around. He can fill a need. I think that's the guy at 57. And with the 88th overall pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select. That's a ways down the road. Going a little bolder, uh, Hunter Henry sticks around till 88. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. I don't. I don't have that kind of crystal ball in my uh, in my hands. 88's a ways down the road. Uh, I'm punting 88. I got nothing. You're punting 88. Punting so Ryan says Hunter Henry. Uh, I got 50 picks away. I got to tell you. Kid. No, you're right. The, the the first tight end's going off the board before 88. That's probably happening. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so I'll go back, and I, I'm a lot closer to. Uh, I'll be honest, I, right away I was a lot closer to Marius Randall than I was to Ha Clinton Dix because yeah. uh, of the, the I even said on Twitter, like, uh, Miles Jack was my Ha Ha Clinton Dix for 2016. Oh, yeah. Like, I would have been just over the moon. Kenny Clark was so boring, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's, it's not, it's, yeah. that's not what that means. And actually, I am immensely more excited, A, after watching a little bit more film, and B, after remembering how young the kid is, because yeah. that is really, especially in a you know a grown ass man's position, because that's what that is. Uh, so I'm a little bit closer to that. I'm gonna give it a B plus. He's I gonna think. get grown asser. Right. He is. He is gonna get grown asser. I mean, I think you could legitimately be talking about a guy at six three three thirty who's really causing like serious problems yeah. in in the seasons to come. Uh, I, I don't know where they'll want him to play. I would be very sad if he ended up an outside linebacker like Dayton Jones. That would be something else. But he, he I don't see that happening. No, nah, he was playing nose. I mean, yeah. he was playing a lot of one tech, but it, yeah. was, it was nose-ish. He's on top of the guard the whole time. Right. And it's much more likely that he adds weight than he than it is that he loses weight. Like yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was nose tackle to Jace. I'll, I'll give it that. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll give it a B plus. I think that it's maybe a little bit better pick than a B. It's certainly not in the A range, but... I, I really do think that Clark is going to end up being uh, a top-flight defensive lineman. I thought he was one of the 14 above-average starters in this class. And after Rankins and, you know, after Buckner, like I told you, I didn't really give a shit, and they got one. So, great. And if they end up with another one, super. Uh, I, I don't really care. They got one. I would have rather maybe gone with Jack and then tried to find another one of those 14 at 57, mm-hmm. but we didn't do that, and that's fine. So, with the 57th overall pick, Ted Thompson screws with everybody and takes Sterling Shepard, wide receiver, Oklahoma. I am freaking out. Yeah. People are super pissed. I'm super pumped. I think that the kid is an absolute superstar waiting to happen, uh, which is unfortunate because I also fell in love with Ryan Broyles, that didn't which is right. like the exact same situation. <laughs> but so I, Also out of Oklahoma. You're right. So like, but I think that at the same time... Um, Shepard does not have the injury issues that Ryan Broyles had, no. and um, I think might be even a little bit better player. Uh, but both of them, yeah, were just prodigious talents out of the, the University of Oklahoma. Uh, that's the only reason that I really even make that uh, lazy comparison. And then with uh, the 88th overall pick, and, and this really just puts a bow on the first two days, the Packers select inside linebacker B.J. Goodson, Clemson. That's my guy. I, I love him. Like after going through all the inside linebackers, and I think Zach Cruz did the inside linebackers for the Cheesehead Draft Guide, uh, Cheesehead TV Draft Guide. And I just went through them, and, and I was looking, and I was looking, and I was looking, and I was looking because 
I knew Caribou liked Deion Jones. I knew that Caribou liked Josh Perry. I knew we all liked, uh, you know, the top end guys, the the Darren Lees and the the Reggie Raglans and, and things like that. I, I think Raglan goes sometime between, you know, pick thirty two and pick fifty seven. I, I don't I don't think that's realistic. But yeah. in in looking beyond that, in trying to find the non first round inside linebacker that could make a difference. I think I found him, and I think it's B.J. Goodson. I think that he was maybe a little bit underrated because of how good Dodd and Lawson were. I mean, they were fantastic. And Mackenzie Alexander actually took a lot of uh, a lot of shine away from Goodson as well, but he's a hell of a player. And I think if you can keep him clean, he has the athleticism to really do a lot of stuff. So uh, those the are Packers my... invested in keeping linebackers clean today. Yes, they did. Yeah. Damn. Because if Kenny Clark wasn't absolutely whipping a center's ass, he was – yeah, holding his ground against a double team, and you and I, um, you specifically, but both of us as as trench geeks, really, really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fun to watch. So, guys, we'd like to thank you as always for listening to From the Benches. Thank you specifically for listening to this uh, this first round recap. The best thing you can do for us, as always, is uh, is give us a review. Uh, we prefer those reviews with five stars and a comment say something nice about me and ryan that'd be great a subscription uh to the packers talk network would be exceptional it helps us come up a little bit higher in the search uh engine on itunes when you search for aaron Rodgers, when you search for the green bay packers things like that it it keeps us bringing uh the highest possible quality content to you the people you can follow us as well you can follow me i am at ross uglum you can follow the show at at from the benches you can follow ryan at Hillisland358. Thank you guys one more time and go pack go. From the benches. From, from, from. From the benches. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If a Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signing. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay. Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice, hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances.